Joe called me again last week to sub for him with a Philharmonic. I had to turn him down. Just really need to stay home to finish this Curtis solo I'm working on. I know I've already transcribed his solos off of every Blakey album, but I think if I just get through these jazz tech records, I'll finally really get inside his sound. You know, Doc? I could have really used the money, and it would have been a chance to play with some really great musicians, but if I practice all that classical stuff, I'll lose my sound. I'm just really trying to find my own voice, you know? <laughs> Did you hear that? Anyway, since I didn't play the gig, I was able to make it to the after after hours jam at the Velour. There were only like two people there and the rhythm section had to read song from my father out of the real book, but I feel like if I just keep hitting these sessions, I might finally get some gigs. There it is again. Is your radio on? <sighs> oh, it was just a dream. What's up, everybody, and welcome to today's lesson. I am Sean Bell, and today we are going to talk about why we would want to practice classical music, even if we are not strictly, quote unquote, classical musicians. Okay, so first of all, just so we're all on the same page, when I'm going to talk about, quote unquote, classical music today, I'm really talking about European chamber and orchestral music. Now, clearly that term classical music could mean a number of different things, but just so we're all on the same page, that is what we are going to use it when we talk about uh, things today. Now, as we saw from our dream sequence at the beginning, the sort of fictional Sean, he had some real misgivings about how uh, practicing classical music was pulling him away, or he felt it was pulling him away from doing what he really wanted to do, which was be a jazz trombone player. All of us have to kind of navigate these waters of how we play the different styles that we need to play in order to fulfill our creative mind, in order to fulfill our kind of financial duties as a working musician in order to just be practical and be able to play with great musicians as much as possible. All of us have to come to terms with this. And you know, for me, um, as somebody who primarily plays jazz and other kind of like commercial styles, being versatile and being able to also sit down in a classical setting and sound reasonably competent and how I get there has always been a challenge for me. And it's something that I work on on a fairly regular basis in order to help me improve that. I see there being three reasons that we really want to work on playing classical music and getting better as a classical musician, even if that's not the main style of music that we perform. Reason number one is that, at least if we're talking about jazz, the masters of that style really knew about classical music. That could be J.J. Johnson being a fan of Bartok. That could be Bird practicing classical saxophone etudes. That might be Coltrane uh, working out of Slominski scale thesaurus. These were musicians that were informed about this style and used it as part of building their musical lexicon. It's easy to think that this group of musicians were only kind of working in a single vein of music, but these were highly skilled players who were living in large urban settings in most cases, and they had a kind of peer group that was a broad range of different musicians and other artists. And so why wouldn't they have a broad range of musical tastes and influences? So it's important to keep that in mind that very few of us live in a bubble of music, and the types of music that we listen to practice, they can all inform the art that we end up creating. Now, reason number two about why we want to deal with classical music as jazz players, this has to do with actually maybe what we do on our instrument. When we're working on maybe a classical etude, maybe some excerpts, maybe a classical solo, that can really force us to deal with some areas of musicianship that we might kind of skirt around when we're working on improvising. Um, despite our best efforts in trying to kind of like force ourselves to deal with our weaknesses when we're improvising. When it comes time to actually perform, it's very easy for us to kind of shy away from the things that we don't do so well. 
the ideas that we hear in our head, they're informed by the things that we know that we can execute cleanly on our instrument. And so the more we can execute on an instrument, the more we'll hear those ideas in our head as we're playing. Now, surely you can work on this by working on transcriptions that challenge you technically or working on jazz etudes. Um, but when we play classical music, the set of like objective guidelines is much narrower than it is in jazz. There's a really wide spectrum of things that are deemed as acceptable from a sound, articulation, style standpoint in jazz. Not that there's no kind of sort of wrong answers, quote unquote, there are just many more correct answers. When we are playing um, in an orchestral style of trombone playing, at least, there's a much narrower set of expectations. Yes, there's some wiggle room in there, but it's much more narrow. And so when we have to fulfill those expectations, that can help us to really improve our playing and also find creativity inside of those guidelines, which can really spur us forward. So let's check this out in an example. Okay, so we're gonna work through two different pieces of music here. One is a Voxman etude, and one is one of the Galliard sonatas. These are both very common pieces of kind of like trombone rep and something that all good trombone players should be aware of. So we're gonna go right at the beginning of Voxman. This is the first etude. This is on page two. It's in B flat major. So here, let's check it out. I'm gonna play it and we'll talk about a few reasons why I think you know this type of etude is important for jazz musicians. <laughs> Now, there's me playing the etude, or at least me doing the best job I can, and I'll preface this by saying I am no kind of great classical trombone player. Um, however, it's something that I do practice on a very regular basis to try to improve at. So when I play this etude, what are the things that I'm looking at um, as potential challenges and things that will help me improve? In most of these boxmans, they cover a pretty wide range um, of the instrument in a relatively short amount of time. They're definitely technical etudes. And so let's look at an example of that and how that can help us in our jazz playing. In the third line, we have this figure. Now, I find that to be particularly challenging to execute, and especially if you're gonna do that with a natural slur the way you really should. Um, now, when I played it in the example, I used the legato tongue there because to be honest, I just couldn't execute it cleanly enough with a natural slur. However, um, if I was gonna really practice this etude maybe over a week or something like that, I would really work my natural slurs in that section because if we go to a jazz setting, we don't necessarily use natural slurs all the time, but when we're playing as a soloist, we might, and especially, say I'm playing a big band gig and I'm gonna play the solo on I'm Getting Sentimental Over You, Tommy Dorsey. Um, I don't know this for sure, but listening to that, to me, it sounds like he uses natural slurs in there. And you can even hear one little chip note in there, right? And so that tells me, ooh, Sean, you gotta work on this. And admittedly, that's not one of my stronger suits as a player. Probably if I was actually performing that song, I would use a little bit of legato tongue to help it be a little bit more confident. So there's a really like technical example of something that practicing some classical music can help us overcome. Let's look at a more musical type of example or a style example. All right, we're in one of the Galliard sonatas here, Sonata 5, and we're gonna be on the third movement. So this one is in 6-8, nice, beautiful, minor melody. And when we're working on this, we really got to think about bringing some life to it. My edition doesn't have a ton of dynamics. There are a couple editions of, of this particular piece that might have more, but mine does not have a ton of dynamics written in there. So we've got to bring some life to it and interpret these phrases. I would argue that if you can interpret a jazz ballad in a good way with dynamics, you can interpret this piece. And the other way around, if you can interpret the dynamics on this piece, you can apply that to a jazz ballad. And if you can do neither of those things, you're gonna struggle on the opposite of those. So let's check it out.
Now, admittedly, that was a little bit slow for that particular movement, but I wanted to have a little extra time so I could really stretch those dynamics out so we could really hear um, those flowing nice phrases. So let's put that into a jazz context. I'm gonna play uh, the standard Lament, J.J. Johnson composition, and I'm really gonna approach it in the same way, just thinking about, all right, where is my line going? Do I wanna feel like I'm pushing forward in this phrase, coming backward in this phrase? The way we interpret these type of songs are very, very similar. So let's check it out. Now, yes, in the JJ tune, I added some extra inflection. I maybe played with a slightly different vibrato, all that type of stuff. I interpreted the melody a little bit more. But at the core of playing just that simple melody, they were the same. You know, I thought about direction of the line. I tried to bring some life to this melody. If I just read that JJ tune, like right off of a lead sheet with no dynamics, um, it would be boring. And just adding dynamics to it is going to make it a lot more interesting, even if we don't add any sort of like jazz interpretation or anything like that. Now, our last reason we might want to think about practicing classical music, even if we are mostly a jazz musician, is a little more pragmatic than the first two. Um, the first two have to do with what we do on our instrument or what we do with our music as a creative individual. The last one has to do with what we do as a working musician. We want to be versatile. For most of us, for better or for worse, we're not going to be J.J. Johnson. And we are not going to be someone who is necessarily making our living as a jazz trombone player playing jazz five or six nights a week. That's just not the reality of the world we live in. Now for me especially, I live in sort of a medium-sized city. While it does have a music scene and I do make a living here, it's certainly not a city that would be large enough to support me playing as a jazz musician enough to make a living that way. So I play many different styles of music and I want to be able to take whatever gig comes my way and do a good job at it. Now, surely, um, I'm not getting any calls to sub uh, for Joe Lessie and the New York Philharmonic as in our dream at the beginning. That was, you know, just a little ridiculous uh, fantasy to prove this point. However, I do want to be able to take any call that I get, and especially if I know I'm going to be playing with high quality musicians, what do I care? Whether it's jazz, classical music, playing in a funk band, whatever. My goal is not necessarily to just say, ooh, I really want to play jazz and I've just got to do my stuff. My goal is to work with great musicians and make music at a high quality and a high level regardless of the style. Now, of course, this means an investment of time, an investment of practice, a balance of practice. And you could make an argument that, well, Sean, if you practice all this classical stuff, your jazz stuff is going to suffer potentially. And while maybe that is true, um, there are times in my practicing life where I'm just working on my jazz stuff and I do maybe feel slightly more confident about like my voice. However, um, for me, Music is not only my artistic kind of outlet, it is my business. And so I have to balance those two things constantly. Now, if you're somebody who feels like you can make your entire living playing just the music you want to play, or maybe it's not your business and you can play just the music you want to play, I applaud you for that. But for most of us, that isn't the case. And so we need to find this balance in our practice. All right, there's a little bit of insight about how I think about why I make classical music a part of my practice, even though it's not the primary type of music that I perform. Um, it's something I think all musicians should try to in incorporate as practicing styles outside of their own kind of at-home styles. And if you're a jazz musician, I think practicing classical music is an absolute must to get this done. All right, happy practicing.